ओके हेलो हेलो वेलकम बैक एवरीवन बैंकिंग चैप्टर बैंक्स क्रिएट क्रेडिट कमर्शियल बैंक्स क्रिएट क्रेडिट और कंट्रोल क्रेडिट व्हाट डू यू थिंक व्हाट डू यू थिंक बैंक्स कमर्शियल बैंक्स क्रिएट क्रेडिट यस और नो कमर्शियल बैंक्स क्रिएट क्रेडिट हाउ डू दे क्रिएट क्रेडिट वी नो दैट दे लेंड इट टू समवन दैट समवन पेस समवन दैट समवन डिपॉजिट्स टू इन सम बैंक एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फॉर यस और नो वी सॉ सो मच ऑफ सो मेनी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स यस्टरडे लॉट ऑफ कांसेप्ट्स लॉट ऑफ टेक्निकल थिंग्स इफ यू रिमेंबर वी हैव टू अकाउंट्स व्हाट व्हाट अकाउंट्स डू वी हैव वी हैव एन इनकम एंड एक्सपेंस अकाउंट and we have an asset and liability account or you know balance sheet it is called as what do you think comes in the liability side of a commercial bank chalo try to recollect very quickly what all did we see in the liability side try to visualize this is the power of visualizing you will use this a lot in your exams kya re ha book ke you know on the right hand side of the page it was written this will help you a lot what was written here on the liability side what do you think the first part was capital capital what is capital capital is the money invested by the owner in the business so why it is a liability for the business because it is the responsibility it is the liability of the business to give that money back to the owner along with profit or after reducing losses if any yes or no next kya tha next what was there deposit i hope you remember the color also capital we had written in orange deposits we had written in yellow okay this makes it a effective way of revising and studying also right today we'll have very less break because we have started so late hai na तो हाँ डिपॉजिट वॉट इज डिपॉजिट दे आर द लाइबिलिटीज बिकॉज दैट इज योर आर मनी विच वी आर विच वी कीप इट विद द बैंक सो दैट इज डिपॉजिट इट इज लाइबिलिटी बिकॉज बैंक हैव द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ रीपेइंग इट बैक टू यू वेन एवर यू रिक्वायर और वेन एवर द टर्म एंड इफ इट इज एन एफ डी एंड ऑल एंड बैंक ऑल्सो हैव द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ गिविंग यू इंटरेस्ट ऑन दैट बैंक ऑल्सो हैव द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ सिक्योरिंग इट कीपिंग इट सिक्योर यस और नो डिड वी सी एनीथिंग एल्स इन द लाइबिलिटी साइड आई डोंट थिंक सो सी देर आर हंड्रेड्स ऑफ थिंग्स बट वी आर डिस्कसिंग ओनली टू थ्री मेजर ऑफ दैम Uh, then um, capital may we had some divisions do you remember tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 tier 1 is one which stays for a long time it is the actual owner's capital tier 2 is like guest capital it comes and goes guest type hai wo theek hai this is done coming to asset side what did we see in the asset side try to visualize everyone please try to visualize please try to visualize today we are going to see mcqs also so i want you to be on your maximum potential here to be a lot attentive to the mcq and i'll show you some tricks also through which even if you don't know how to know the correct answer chances are you will arrive at the correct answer ha uh, assets mein kya hai what is about assets loans and advances the biggest asset is loans and advances why loans and advances are the asset because that is the machinery or that is the income earning activity of the bank yes or no it gives loans it earns interest acha deposits pe it will give interest or on interest banks will Give interest. Then where did we write in the income side or expense side? Expense side. On loans and advances, it will be the income of the bank, yes or no? So interest on loans and advances is the income. Then what did we see in the asset side? We also saw a lot of investments. Investments in government bonds, corporate bonds, cash, gold, any other asset. Bank might have ten cars for its directors to use. So that ten cars would also come in asset side because asset is. It is expected to give future economic benefits back to the bank for a long period of time, for a considerable period of time. See. Link the concept of revenue expenditure and revenue receipts with this. It is the same nature. Revenue capital, revenue capital, revenue comes here, capital comes here. Whether liability or asset. Uh, who is borrowing when banks buy ten thousand worth worth of government securities? Who is the borrower? Government is the borrower when banks buy ten thousand rupees worth of this. Government is the borrower. So you know you can even understand with the example of you going to a shop, grocery shop. And you buying ten rupees worth of lace packet. The only difference here is that you don't uh, you uh, you know lace packet everything you take you give the shopkeeper ten rupees and you tell that tomorrow again I will give you the lace packet and you give me ten rupees back. Government securities me वही होता है. Today you are giving money to government securities. He is giving you that piece of paper which is called as government bond. What are short term called as? Treasury bills. Are state governments allowed to issue short term securities? No, are state governments allowed? Are state governments allowed to access clean ways and means advances? Yes, are state governments allowed to access secured ways and means advances? Yes, central government only clean or only secured? Only clean, unsecured. Ah, always remember unsecured is clean because उसमें there is no messy paperwork, there is no collateral कुछ नहीं है. We'll see the how. Look at that. Just come and take it. Very good. ठीक है पावर ऑफ विजुअलाइजिंग वी आर विजुअलाइजिंग थिंग्स नाउ नेक्स्ट इफ यू हैव सीन द सीरीज द मेंटलिस्ट उसमें देयर इज एन एंटायर 
entire uh, organization called visualize you know they just tell you to look into yourself and visualize how powerful you are we are we are visualizing how powerful economics in economics we are personally i don't know how powerful we all are uh, on a spiritual level anyways uh, then we came to uh, loans and advances did we divide loans and advances into some parts one was standard which are very good second was sub no second was stressed which are good but they are showing some kind of stress which means that you have slight fever but not complete fever you are not completely sick but thoda fever hai it might come down also it might go up also third kya tha third was substandard substandard loans mein we saw various categories what were those categories what do you think were those categories what were those categories substandard mein what were those categories so the first one first one very clear was special mention account what is the number of days 60 days 90 days theek hai theek hai 90 days see if you were here na some of you would have said yes and then i would have told you are not paying attention it it happens always in my class i say ki uh, you know state governments are allowed to issue long term uh, sorry short term uh, securities yes so everyone says yes then i say no it is not state governments are not allowed this is when you check whether you are alert or not theek hai right uh next uh, what after special mention account we just discuss the stages then it becomes doubtful asset one then it doubtful asset two doubtful asset three that is also called as loss asset theek hai uh every loan almost every loan has two portions secured and unsecured what provision would lie first or you know what would you provide for first the unsecured portion you would provide for first and then secured portion dheere dheere will start selling off and provide theek hai i am using the word provide what is the meaning of provision now what is the meaning of provision what do you think is the meaning of provision provision means to keep some money aside in your expense or your uh, in your expense or income which side did we write expense or income expense because you are keeping some money aside so it reduces your income or increases your expense na it reduces the discretion available to the bank to use it barabar bank would have done anything but it has to keep some money aside block right so tell me 180 का सबस्टैंडर्ड एसेट है सबस्टैंडर्ड एसेट इज ऑफ 180 एटी रुपीज थर्टी फाइव रुपीज इज द प्रोविजन हाउ मच इज द ग्रॉस एनपीए वन एटी माइनस थर्टी फाइव वन फोर्टी फाइव इज द नेट एनपीए ठीक है प्रोविजनिंग यू रिमेम्बर प्रोविजनिंग राइट वी सॉ ग्रॉस एनपीए वी सॉ नेट एनपीए वी सॉ प्रोविजनिंग ऑल्सो देन वी केम की हाउ टू see we will we will discuss ki why npas are bad that is all fine i hope you will read more through newspapers you will go through articles and you know you will get more points we have discussed a few points why npas are bad basically they are the blood of the organization you know sorry of the economy of indian economy and uh, how why do npas arise what do you think they can be either fraudulent or they can be non willful also they can be genuine concerns also we saw power sector so in 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 the in respect of providing free power to farmers losses are borne by power discom so distribution companies and they cannot service their loan which has an adverse effect on the banks right we we'll speak about farm loan waivers in the agriculture sector ki why it is an issue and everything right uh, then uh, then uh, what else did we say yesterday we saw very important we saw basel committee recommendations we saw basel committee on banking supervision we saw bank for international settlement we saw there were three pillars pillar 1 pillar 2 pillar 3 ठीक है वी सो बेसिल वन बेसिल टू बेसिल थ्री देन बेसिल थ्री एट थ्री पिलर्स वन टू थ्री व्हाट वाज द फर्स्ट पिलर फर्स्ट पिलर वाज फर्स्ट पिलर वाज मैनेजिंग रिस्क क्रेडिट रिस्क मार्केट रिस्क ऑपरेशनल रिस्क सेकंड पिलर वाज बैंकिंग सुपरवाइजर्स व्हाट वाज द थर्ड पिलर थर्ड पिलर वाज एड डिस्क्लोजर रिक्वायरमेंट्स कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी एंड एसेट क्वालिटी ठीक है देन वी सो व्हाट आर मैक्रो प्रोडेंशियल नॉर्म्स और व्हाट आर प्रोडेंशियल नॉर्म्स सी मैक्रो प्रोडेंशियल और प्रोडेंशियल नॉर्म्स आर वेरी जनरल नेम्स ठीक है they are given by bcbs basel committee but they are used generally also so what do you think is the uh, uh what are the four macro prudential norms that we know step 1 it is not actually step wise you can write it in any order but we go it step wise because it is logical so first step is to asset classification why asset because it is a loan okay now you understood why it is called an asset of so whenever liabilities are spoken of we are talking about deposits or loans deposits whenever assets are spoken about we talk about loans and advances very good so now uh, when we go to uh, your uh, prudential norms macro prudential norm first step is for asset classification classify it accordingly da1 hai ki da2 hai ki da3 hai so which 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 bank is in better health bank having high nps or low nps low nps which bank is in better health bank having high da1 or bank having high da2 
बैंक हेवन हाई डी ए वन इज मच मोर बेटर बिकॉज स्टिल रिकवरी का चांस है राइट इफ यू फॉल सिक फॉर फोर डेज स्टिल रिकवरी चांसेज है इफ यू फॉल सिक फॉर फोर हंड्रेड डेज रिकवरी चांसेज वेरी लेस ठीक है then we saw what was the first one asset classification second one the moment it turns np you should stop your income recognition third one according to the stages da1 da2 da3 you should you should go for provisioning you should go for uh, what we say uh, timely provisioning accurate provisioning you should not under provide over provision karna hai to very good you are you know you are more than welcome but under provide you should not do what was the fourth thing maintain capital adequacy ratio also known as that Use the exact words. Don't use, don't use, you know, like the normal random words. Use the exact words. What was the full form? Capital assets ratio or capital to risk weighted assets ratio. Why risk weighted? Because you allocate different risks. Someone who is salaried would have very less risk. उसको monthly salary आ रहा है. Someone who is doing business might have more risk. Right? Uh, very good. Next, we saw that uh, capital adequacy ratio. What is capital adequacy ratio? Capital upon Loans and advances. ठीक है. Why is it maintained? Why is it maintained? Capital adequacy ratio. It is maintained because owners have to be invested in the business. So as soon as you or as more the more your business grows, the more your loans and advances grow, the more your um, uh, you are hungry for your uh, business to grow. You have to invest more and more capital here. Why? To protect whom? Depositors. To protect depositors. You also saw that CRR and SLR is a percentage of what? CRR and SLR is a percentage of what? Net demand and liabilities and capital adequacy is a percentage of what? Loans and advances. So always remember, the more you grow, the more capital adequacy you have to keep, and the more you take deposits, the more CRR and SLR you have to keep. Yes or no? So both of them are balanced as per your loan business angle also and as per your deposits liability angle also. We saw a few more ratios. Do you remember we saw a few more ratios? What was one another ratio apart from capital adequacy ratio? Did we see? It was what? It was what? Liquidity coverage ratio. Liquidity coverage ratio. Why liquidity? What is liquid? Liquid means readily convertible to cash. Anything you can go down and you can sell. That is readily convertible to cash. Are fruits and vegetables liquid? Yes, they are liquid because if you have one one dozen mangoes, you can readily sell them for anyone. Okay. Is a car liquid? Not so much because to find a buyer for a car, it takes time. It is liquid, but in varying degrees. Lesser degree may liquid. Hai. Yes or no? Do you agree with this? Very simple. Is a building liquid? Is a land liquid? No, they are known as illiquid assets because you cannot liquidate them very quickly. See, liquidate karna means to convert into liquid, and what is liquid? Cash. So liquidating means. So uh, what is liquidity coverage ratio now? Try to recollect the numerator and denominator. Try to think. Try to recollect. See, it is liquidity coverage ratio. You are checking that how much covered you are in terms of liquid assets. How much covered you are? Okay. So we see first to how many liquid assets we have divided by what cash outflow in a stress scenario. Okay. Do you remember? Okay. Let's say you calculate liquidity coverage ratio for one month. So for one month, if you have to incur expenses, if everything else stops, खत्म हो जाता है. Everything else stops. Then How much liquid assets you have? Ki kya kya base ke? What all you can sell and you know you can keep your business running. You can keep servicing your depositors or any other interest obligations. So you say you take high quality liquid assets. Now high quality because uh, those should be respectable in banking operations. You know you have when you are selling it, someone has to buy it. So even so, soiled note or torn note is not liquid. It is not high quality. Na nobody will accept so torn note. If you tear a note and if you give, nobody will accept. So it is not a high quality liquid asset. It is liquid but not high quality. Some might accept, some might not accept. High quality liquid assets divided by cash outflow in a stress scenario. Then what was the third one? What was the third one? Net stable funding ratio (NSFR). Net stable funding ratio. Simple here. Net stable funding ratio. It is what. It is available stable funding divided by required stable funding. Required stable funding hundred. Available stable funding ninety. Ratio is zero point nine or ninety percent. Okay, how much is the requirement? More than and equal to or more than hundred percent. If it is more than hundred, which means you are very well funded. Stable funding, na see why stable funding is required because if the funding flies away, then what happens if the funding flies away? Who is at loss? Depositors. Depositors' money is stuck. So the funding should be stable. It should be for a long term. Yes or no? Anything else did we see? 
we saw how to resolve nps we saw restructuring we did the entire discussion on asset reconstruction companies we also saw that government is now bringing in a new asset reconstruction company called narcl national asset reconstruction company limited do you remember this is government going to hold any stake in narcl no banks will hold banks will hold stake in narcl right we saw that article na 89000 crores worth of bad loans are ready to be transferred to narcl narcl or any asset reconstruction company um, does the business of what taking bad loans and either modifying them or selling it them now when they have a big loan what do they do use the word use the word they securitize it securitization securitization means converting them into tradable securities securities means what anything any financial instrument which is tradable is a security so today if i have one share of tata if i give you one share of tata it is securities all these are securities securitization means what i do is that one loan ka paperwork i have let's say i have a loan agreement of 50 pages which is ki 50 crores hai so i draw more agreements which will have amounts of 10 lakh 5 lakh 15 lakhs and bear in mind the amount need not be same so yesterday we did 50 lakhs into 10 need not be 50 lakhs into 10 some amount should be small some amount should be huge so 1 crore ka 1 hoga 20 lakhs ke 5 honge any anything any way you can do it okay that is called as securitization theek hai uh as national asset reconstruction company limited is also known as dash very very common word a very common word starts with b bad bank <laughs> that is a very very crude way of putting it na bad bank very funny way also ki nobody wants a bad bank theek okay? hai we'll speak about bad bank in a while or arc then we saw that uh, arc is a registered under companies act but also regulated or registered under which act <laughs> now if you were here and if you told me the full form without looking i would have given you a chocolate really normally i carry you know 1 rupee 2 rupee eclairs with me and those who give me very good answers you know i give them chocolate it's just a fun way ah uh, surprise is not what i'm looking for i'm looking for the full form surprise is very easy to remember even that is not easy to remember but still what is s s stands for securitization what is a a stands for and what is r r stands for reconstruction what is fir beech mein o hai of you don't mention the o so securitization and reconstruction of financial assets sarfa done and esi sarfa is in a esi enforcement of security interest act which year years i like years i like to remember years which year Two thousand two, Surfaizi Act two thousand two. ठीक है, Companies Act. Which what is the year for Companies Act? Two thousand thirteen one three. Always remember, Companies Act is two thousand thirteen. It is not nineteen fifty six. Nineteen fifty six Act is repealed. It has gone. Now whatever remains is the Companies Act two thousand thirteen. ठीक है, we spoke about all these things yesterday. So let us speak ahead. इसके आगे क्या है? What do you think are the advantages of a bad bank? I think we have seen advantages of a bad bank. It cleans up balance sheet of the banks. Yes or no? What do you think are the disadvantages of a bad bank? Ah, uh, one more advantage of a bad bank is that professionally uh, managed. It will be professionally managed. So let's say normal bank might not have experts in bad loans. Normal banks might not have the expertise or the time to restructure bad loans. But a bad bank will have people who are experienced in this. Who know how to deal with bad loans, so they will be. What do you think is the disadvantage of bad bank? Try to take a guess. What are the disadvantages of bad bank? क्या है क्या लगता है? What do you think are the disadvantages of a bad bank? Think, think, think. सिंपल है यू आर जस्ट मूविंग द बैड लोन फ्रॉम वन बैंक टू अनदर फ्रॉम नॉर्मल बैंक टू बैड बैंक द बैड लोन इज नॉट वैनिशिंग फ्रॉम योर इकोनॉमी द बैड बैंक द बैड लोन इज जस्ट चेंजिंग ओनरशिप एंड इफ 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 एट ऑल द रिकवरी इज वेरी लेस देन वॉट हैपन्स एंटायर इकोनॉमी में बैड लोन आर स्टिल देर यस नो दे आर जस्ट फ्लोटिंग समवेयर दे आर नॉट इन द हैंड्स ऑफ बैंक नाउ बट इन हैंड्स ऑफ बैड बैंक बट स्टिल बैड लोन तो है ना बैड लोन इट स्टिल एक्जिस्ट एंड इफ बैड बैंक इज नॉट एबल टू रिकवर देन वॉट Then it is nothing but shifting loan from one bank to another, है ना? Then and bad bank will take bad loans of almost all the banks. 
which means that particular bank would be so burdened and funding that bad bank is very difficult then samajh rahe so for example i told you bad bank would be founded by various banks they will put in their money and they will put in their share and they will open a bad bank so if icici is icici sbi sdfc axis bank if they are putting in bad bank they are opening a bad bank icici will tomorrow say ki sbi's bad loans are much higher sbi should put in more money so wo wo problem ho sakta hai you know that problem can happen ki it dis it disincentivizes uh, reduction of bad loans in the first place ki you know are bad bank hey, it will take away bad loan it it creates a very lax attitude it creates a very uh, relaxed attitude hai na because see you know that your bad loan is going to be taken over by bad bank to give loans even if it becomes bad bad bank hai na that 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 support and that assurance is very wrong or very misleading theek okay? hai then we saw that npl happened due to a lot of reckless lending after 2008 and so on and so forth we saw all of those things uh, what else did we see did we see anything else so let us move ahead or uh, there are a few i told you there are a few ancillary things which are remaining which you need to know so let us start with the with the history of banking i tell you the history of banking very quickly i'll tell you the history what happened earlier and what was the scenario i hope you know the history of rbi and sbi we have discussed it hilton young commission 1924 rbi established 1935 rbi nationalized 1949 imperial bank of india 1921 nationalized in 1955 renamed as state bank of india i hope you know all this right so after independence what happened was after independence we set up planning commission in the year 1951 We'll read about this in the books. That is, I'm not writing it here. In 1951, we set up planning commission, and we introduced the concept of five-year plans. We are going to do planning chapters, so in that we'll speak in detail. Okay. What we did was see. Even while studying, also we make one-year plans. We make five-month, six-month plan. Ki yahan tak mera syllabus ho jana chahiye. My syllabus should get completed after six months and so on. Right. Uh, so what we did was. Uh, we 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 adopted the five year planning system so five years economy in what direction will economy go in five years that we will study or uh, sorry that we will uh, see as a government plan five year plan it took help from ussr united states of soviet russia right so five year mein they decided ki currently all banks are private in that time when we were we, when we got independence apart from sbi sbi was privatized in 1955 uh, nationalized in 1955 apart from sbi and rbi all banks were privately owned or banks were owned by landlords and big families you know private wealthy families so we saw that they don't have any incentive to reach rural areas yes or no because if they are profit making if they are headed by wealthy families they don't have incentive to go in rural areas why will they open bank in rural areas there is no business there and we want to take banking to rural areas we want to mobilize resources yes or no we want to mobilize savings we want to inculcate savings habits we want to use that money to flow in the economy we want to boost our economy yes or no we want to boost c plus i plus b plus x minus n so what we did was we started nationalizing banks ki give it to me you i will pay you you sit at home i am government i will run the bank government started nationalizing banks Are you understanding what is the meaning of the term nationalization? Government increased government ownership to more than fifty percent, fifty one, fifty two, whatever. ठीक है? So government started nationalizing. So it it did the first nationalization in 1969. Indira Gandhi was in favor of nationalization. Indira Gandhi also came up with the slogan of "Garibi Hatao" and banking system to reach the masses was very, very, very important. Are you getting it? So 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. and let's say 1980s also some of it we nationalized we massively nationalized banks so first nationalization first nationalization happened in 1969 can you guess how many banks were nationalized see there are hardly 21 banks today first First nationalization happened in 1969 when 14 banks were nationalized. One four. So Bank Nationalization Act was passed. Bank Nationalization Act 
Nationalization means what? Bank, uh, government buying in majority ownership of the banks. Whatever, whoever the private owners were, wealthy families, business families. You know, Birla Bank was also there earlier. So that was nationalized. All these banks were nationalized. And then, you know, Bank of Baroda, which was established as a, national, uh, as a private bank by the Maharaja of Baroda and all. And now Bank of Baroda is a government bank. Yes or no? So it was nationalized in 1969. By paying off the owners and they are telling you keep the money, you stay at home, let us control banks. Okay? Second nationalization, we are not going into the details of what exactly happened every year. There are a lot many events which happened here but they are not required right now. You don't have the time also. Second nationalization happened in 1980, six banks were nationalized. So now 20 banks are nationalized. Okay? 20 banks are now nationalized. Now tell me what are the benefits of nationalization. You only tell me. I am not going to tell you. Mera ho you only tell me. Why are we nationalizing? What are the benefits of nationalization? What do you think? Why do we nationalize? Why are we doing nationalization? Do you understand what we are doing by nationalization? We are taking, government is taking ownership of banks. Simple. Government wants to take ownership of banks. Why are we doing nationalization? One, Rural penetration, and because if government has the bank, then it can open branches in rural areas. Private people will not open. Second, social objectives. To achieve social objectives, banking habits. Third, financial literacy. And if people come to know what is a bank, what is a bank branch, how to deposit, how to withdraw, they will start saving. Na? I hope you know in villages, I hope you know in villages money is stored in food jars, even in homes also and uh, women store money in their blouse and uh, gents, which gents don't store money, they spend it on alcohol and all in village areas. But uh, money is stored at home which is at risk because any thieves can come, the house will, you know, house if there is earthquake or there is uh, any damage to the house, money can go and you know there are a lot of domestic violence cases in rural areas where Husbands uh, under the influence of alcohol, they hit their wives and they take the money away. So there is no savings in rural households. So that is why banks are important in rural areas. To keep your money in the bank. If the bank mein chala gaya, then it is safe there. Hai na? All these social objectives. Can you think anything that can go wrong in nationalization? Do you think anything that can go wrong? You only tell me. I want very active participation from every one of you who is sitting at home. Please try to think and tell me what can go wrong when you nationalize. What can go wrong? Kya lagta hai? What can go wrong in nationalization? Or what are the ill effects of nationalization? What do you think? What do you think are the ill effects of nationalization? Have you ever visited a government office? Have you ever visited a government bank? Compare SBI with HDFC or Axis Bank and tell me what can go wrong in a government bank. Or how, how do you think is the experience when you visit SBI? And how do you think is the experience when you visit Axis or HDFC or ICIC? What do you think? What words come to your mind when you visit SBI? Inefficiency. Okay. Always remember inefficiency leads to profit loss. Inefficiency leads to loss of profit. Okay. It leads to lower revenue. Okay. What else? Have you ever seen I mean in ORN, in ORN, in old Rajendra Nagar, there is a Kotak Mahindra Bank, 2 kilometers here, 2 kilometers here, 3 kilometers here. Branch, not ATM, branch. Now imagine 20 banks are under the control of government and they are aggressively pushing rural penetration. Do you think one village will have one branch or four branches of different banks? Four branches. Duplication hai, theke, multiple branches in a small area, it's a very wrong practice. Very, very wrong practice. Ha, if you are different banks competing, then it is fine. But one bank having three branches here, 
Doesn't make sense. Multiple branches in small areas. What next? Anything else? Multiple small banks. I'll tell. I'll. I'll speak about this. Thick. Fourth. Always remember, always remember before 1991, before economic liberalization happened in 1991, we are going to talk about 91 reforms also in our further lectures. Before economic liberalization happened in 1991, 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s and half of 80s, we were a very tightly controlled economy. Government was controlling almost every aspect of it. Samja? So, what do you think? In a tightly controlled economy, CRR, SLR would be higher or lower? In a very tightly controlled economy, CRR, SLR was higher. Very high. What do you think about interest rates? Interest rates would be higher or lower? Interest rates were very high. Interest rates were very, very, very high. Okay, it was a very tightly controlled economy. And the reason was that there were a lot of droughts, there were famines, there were war with China, war with Pakistan. Okay, there were two wars, there was Bangladesh liberalization war, 71 May. So many things were happening in this point of time or in this history. So many things were happening that we needed a very tight rein or tight control on the economy. Government needed, um, what we say, government needed a lot of, um, lot of power to uh, use the money for war, to use the money for drought affecting, or to you know, uh, compensate drought affected families etc. So this was a very tight scenario. The freedom which you see today was not available. Tabi. Okay? Then what happened? What happened after that? Do you think, do you think in this tight scenario, profitability would be high? Profitability was not high. Then what happened? We undertook LPG reform, reforms. LPG. What does LPG stand for? I hope you know this. Liberalization. Privatization. Globalization. LPG. LPG reforms. Liberalization, privatization, globalization. Right? When we when when did we do these reforms? 1991. Okay. Right. We'll speak about LPG reforms in detail also, but just know that the iron grip or the iron fist with which government ruled India economic in economic sphere, we had started to lose it now. Okay. Very important. Very 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 important. We set up a committee called Narsimham Committee. This is the Biggest committee in banking sector ever. The biggest mandate. Narsimham committee. Don't confuse it with the Prime Minister P.V. Narsimha Rao. He was different. He is Narsimham committee. Okay. Narsimham committee was set up in 1991. Immediately when LPG reforms were announced. 1991 Narsimham committee set up. I had read a book by Montek Singh Aluwalia. Who was the planning commission secretary in this time. And he had to, he has written so many things which are very interesting. Ki how you know how these LPG reforms uh, went about, how these LPG reforms started, what was the what was the backstory behind these LPG reforms? Hai, chalo. 1991, I would call this as Narsimham Committee 1. Narsimham Committee 1, 1991, and Narsimham Committee 2 came in 1998. There were two committees. Narsimham Committee 1 and Narsimham Committee 2. There were two committees, 1991 and 1998. Now you tell me, you tell me, what do you think would be the recommendations of Narsimham committee? Chalo, you tell me, what would be the recommendations of Narsimham committee? I would write it here. Tell me. Did you understand the purpose of Narsimham committee? You can write it afterwards. I want your attention here, not in writing. I don't encourage writing in the lectures. Okay. Tell me why was Narsimham committee formed? Why was Narsimham committee formed? Speak, you can speak. Why was Narsimham committee formed? 
to reduce government controls to recommend how to liberalize the economy liberalization kar rahe na how to liberalize the economy so what would you think narsimham committee would recommend narsimham committee's first recommendation i hope everyone would agree nationalization should increase or reduce stop stop nationalization first and foremost dono ka recommendations i am giving together because there is no need to differentiate between these two nationalization should be stopped all together no further nationalization were the words used in the committee report no further nationalization second second there were a few private banks also which had opened so see this create a level playing what do you understand by level playing field equal equal chance equal opportunities create a level playing field create a level playing field for public and private banks samjha create a level playing field for public and private banks did you understand this third what do you think remember the earlier situation abhi kya recommendation hoga we have to rectify this what would be the recommendation merge banks merge the banks i'll tell you why merge the banks why 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 merge banks see always always remember the bigger a bank gets the more resilient it is resilient means it can accept shocks Let's say economic shock हो जाता है. There is economic downfall, there is recession, there is depression. Who will survive? Big banks or small banks? Big banks would survive. They have lot of money, they have lot of buffer, they have lot of CRR, SLR, CAR. Yes or no? So merge banks and why to create a see the words global bank. India should have one bank which is biggest, you know, which is considered to be among the biggest in the world. Last to last year's economic survey had said that we don't have any bank in top ten. अभी हो गया है after SBI was merged with its subsidiaries. There were subsidiaries of SBI, State Bank of Bikaner, Jaipur, State Bank of Madras, State Bank of Patiala and Punjab. All of those were merged into SBI, and then now SBI has. China has. More than six global banks in top ten. Just imagine, top ten global banks में छः चाइना के. Just imagine, India में. SBI was forty second earlier. We need one global bank. See, when you have a global bank, you will get global business. Yes or no? Do you think Thane Janata Sarkari Bank can lend to people in America? But if there is SBI or any other bank which is very big, it can cater to global audience or it can cater to global customer. Yes or no? Do you think that is beneficial for India? Yes, that is very beneficial for India. Okay, then reduce CRR SLR, of course. Then see this. Deregulate interest rates. मतलब क्या? government should not control interest rates and then later on that function was given to rbi to reduce or increase interest rates depending on the policy but even if even now you notice that government or rbi does not act impulsively ki aaj shock ho gaya so today immediately rate increase it does not happen it sees it waits it waits it watches and then it does deregulate interest rates don't have complete iron fist on interest rates next very important See earlier, earlier we had social objectives. Yes or no? Now also we have social objectives. Earlier our socialism was much more. What do you think would be the proportion of PSL, priority sector lending, higher or lower? Earlier, earlier. Why? I told you earlier our social objectives were very high, which means the proportion of priority sector lending was very high. Which means out of hundred rupees, you have to give eighty rupees to farmers because our social objectives is. Are you getting this? The percentage set aside for priority sectors were very high earlier because we need garib for poverty, anti-poverty, 
and for agriculture sector and all the proportion of psl priority sector was very high earlier it was very very high earlier this committee said ki are if you are keeping up all your funds for priority sector how would other sectors survive how would other sectors get money how would other sectors uh, you know increase their business so this committee said rationalize priority sector rationalize priority sector which means what reduce the amount of priority sector available last time it was uh, before 1991 suppose it was said ki out of 100 loanable funds you can give 80 rupees you have to give 80 rupees to farmers and only 20 you can give to others they said ki reduce that proportion i know social objectives are there we know farmers need money but 80% of entire credit going to priority sector how would other sectors survive how would other sectors get money we are economy we are not social uh, we are not in a you know social class or no social justice or not society we are talking about economy here maximum committee said ki reduce priority sector lending do you agree with this or you have any doubt you can ask me if you have any doubt earlier the priority sector proportion was very high why because we wanted more and more funds to go to the priority sectors now we are saying ki everyone should have chance to get money everyone should have a chance to grow everyone why only affordable housing luxury houses should also be sold in india that is when indian economy will grow that is when indian economy will grow on a higher level ठीक है रैशनलाइज प्रायोरिटी प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग दिस इज वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डू आई मीन अर्लियर इट वाज वेरी हाई नाउ वी हैव रिड्यूस्ड इट सो नाउ अर्लियर इट वाज 70 80% नाउ वी हैव कम अराउंड 40% यस और नो प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर इज 40% ऑफ व्हाट ऑफ व्हाट वी हैव सम टर्म ना Do you remember? Try to remember. Average net bank credit A and B C. Okay, it's okay. It's fine. Right? Then, ha. Huh, then very good. Last two, last two uh, recommendations. I hope you know. See this. Do you understand this? Tell me, ah. Huh? Do you understand this? Introduce prudential norms, right? See this. This was the last recommendation. So these were major recommendations. It was a 400, 450 page report which was given by Nasimam Committee. These were the major recommendations. Nationalisation should stop immediately. You should create a level playing field for public and private banks. Okay. you should merge banks to create a global bank you should merge the banks crr slr should reduce interest rate should reduce psl proportion should reduce set up arc and introduce prudential norms introduce prudential norms you know what are prudential norms those four norms okay this was the recommendation of narsimham committee and we try to do that constantly we are trying to do it we are reducing crr slr right now crr is only 4% slr is only 18% I remember when I was doing my CA, SLR was twenty three percent. Depending on the nature of the economy, requirement of the economy, CRR SLR keeps on changing. But we have found a new low now. You know, in in coming times, when we grow, when we want to grow higher, if inflation is not, if inflation is not that high, we might even reduce our SLR to sixteen percent also. Okay, remember there is no floor for SLR. What is the cap for SLR? Forty percent. There is no floor or cap for CRR. when was this removed 2006 did you understand the history of banking and then we opened up our then we opened up our economy we also we also invited lot of private banks to come in india then jp morgan deutsche bank so many private hsbc so many names you heard year of a standard chartered they all came in privatization and globalization also happened we are not going into detail in this because this is a separate chapter altogether okay but did you understand this this is narsimham committee report narsimham committee recommendations which are eight recommendations primarily eight recommendations there were lot others also theek hai did you get this did you understand this very easy simple
then this is done, this is done, this is done, ha, this is very important. Now, what are the qualitative tools of credit control? Credit control ke qualitative tools. How can RBI reign or control or exercise control over commercial banks? What are the ways? Can you think of any ways in which RBI exercises control on commercial banks? What are they? Fixation of margin requirements. Second, priority sector lending. Third, I told you third was moral suasion. What is moral suasion? Dhamki, threatening. Fourth was direct action. Now this direct action we are talking about here. If banks do not follow prudential norms, if banks do not classify NPAs, if banks do not stop recognizing income, if banks do not uh, provide for it, if banks do not maintain capital adequacy ratio, then what does RBI do? RBI is also setting up, RBI is monitoring who is following what. Now, what do you think are the indicators that a bank is going to fail? What do you think? Kya lagta hai? What do you think are the indicators? When NPAs rise, when capital falls, yes or no? When profitability falls, okay? So, uh, or you know, when growth falls, bank is not giving new loans only, kuch to gadbad hai. So, these are all indicators of bank failure. Not exactly bank has failed, but pre indicators, you can say these are. Uh, you know, this give indications that banks might fail. Okay? Now, we spoke about direct action. So, what direct actions can RBI do? Do you think RBI waits for a bank to fail or it will take some pre-actions only? It will take some precautionary actions. Okay? What RBI does is, RBI calls the bank, let's say, for example, let's say Axis Bank is facing troubles. RBI will call up Axis Bank. RBI will say, next time you open any new branch, you have to ask me. Next time you have to give any new loan more than 100 crore rupees, you have to ask me. Next time you do anything risky, you have to ask me. Next time if you want to increase salary of your managing director, you have to ask me. Because there are depositors whose money is threatened, I will take control of you indirectly. So anything you want to do, you have to ask me. Samja? Yes or no? Okay. Do you think RBI has bad intention for the bank or good intention for the bank? Good intention. Do you think RBI is doing it to make the bank situation worse or to correct the bank's situation? To correct the bank situation. So this, so what RBI does is RBI has a framework. Ki any bank, any bank whose loans fall down, whose NPAs rise up, whose uh, capital falls down, etc. Who falls in these parameters will, will indirectly come under my control. Which means to do anything new, you have to ask me. I am RBI. Samja? This framework. This framework. I hope you are getting in. This framework is called English. See the English. Prompt and corrective action. This framework is called prompt and corrective action. Okay. Let me show you. I have not. I am not. I have not seen any article recently, but still. Let us try our luck. News. Yuko Bank urges RBI to lift PCA. What does this mean? Yuko Bank wants its freedom back. Yuko Bank says, please remove me out of PCA. This is a framework. When Yuko Bank goes in that framework, it means RBI has a lot of restrictions on it. You cannot give big loans. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. Okay? See this. Let us try to read this. Public sector lender, Yuko Bank has urged Reserve Bank of India again to consider taking it out of the prompt corrective action framework after posting full year profit. Now it is saying that I am making profit now. I am my health is good now. Please discharge me from the hospital. See, prompt and corrective action is like hospital. You go in the hospital now. You have to do what doctor says. You say, I need laptop. Doctor says nothing doing. I need TV. No, no, nothing. Then you say, I am feeling fine. No pain, nothing. Please discharge. Yes or no? Same. See, RBI had initiated PCA for the Kolkata based lender, which is Yuko Bank, in May 2017. It is in prompt and corrective action. It is in hospital since 2017. In view of what? High non-performing assets and negative return on assets. Matlab, profitability is also gone. 
in the last financial year bank posted full year profit of 167 crores against a 2436 crore loss during last year so it is saying ki see i was down by 2436 now i am up by 164 i am doing well i am doing profit i am making profit please remove me from pca framework why it is asking to remove because it has restrictions on expansion it has restrictions on business hai na it is tied to the bed now it is saying i want to run same thing ठीक है समझा वी जस्ट टुक वन आर्टिकल रैंडमली डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज प्रॉम्प्ट एंड करेक्टिव एक्शन आई वुड राइट दिस एज अ हॉस्पिटल लिख देता हूं इट इज लाइक अ हॉस्पिटल ठीक है इट इज लाइक अ हॉस्पिटल कि इफ अ बैंक इज देयर नाउ प्लीज बेयर इन माइंड दिस इज ओनली फॉर शेड्यूल्ड कमर्शियल बैंक्स this is not for cooperative banks this is only for scheduled commercial banks i hope you understand when i write scheduled commercial banks what are scheduled what are commercial what are banks theek hai so there are three major indicators when rbi decides ki iska time aa gaya hai to take this into hospital see whether you agree or not asset quality barabar if asset quality deteriorates then prompt and corrective action What about capital adequacy? Remember, capital adequacy. What about profitability? Okay, these are normally indicators. Now, what kind of restrictions? I told you, you cannot open a new branch. You cannot give a higher loan. You cannot increase salary of your uh, director or you know of your chief person, right? So basically, hospital me. You are restricted. so would the banks commercial banks would like to go in pca or like to not go in pca not going because rbi is taking direct action here remember direct action direct action now a similar thing is also there for cooperative banks it is mainly used for urban cooperative banks very rarely used for rural cooperative banks similar thing that is called very similar ah huh? very similar that is called see this अलग अलग नाम है काम सेम है सुपरवाइजरी एक्शन फ्रेमवर्क समझा सुपरवाइजरी एक्शन फ्रेमवर्क एस ए एफ सिमिलर थिंग बट फॉर मेनली अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स डू यू नो कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स यस लेट अस लुक एट सुपरवाइजरी एक्शन फ्रेमवर्क का कुछ एनीथिंग वी कैन फाइंड डायरेक्ट लाइव आरबीए सुपरवाइजरी एक्शन फ्रेमवर्क फॉर प्राइमरी अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक्स ठीक है एसेट क्वालिटी अन अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक मे बी प्लेस्ड अंडर एस एफ वेन इट्स नेट एनपीए डू यू नॉट इट नेट एनपीए एक्सीड सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ इट्स नेट एडवांसेस लोन एंड एडवांसेस depending on the severity of the stress reserve bank may may take one of the following action see what are the actions advising the urban cooperative bank to submit a board approval advising board of directors advising to submit post review progress restriction on payment of dividend curtailment to of new credit reduction in exposure limits etc one is asset quality second profitability when it can be placed If it incurs losses for two consecutive financial years, two साल तक loss ही कर रहा है. Third, do you know what is that? Do you know the heading? Third heading, what is it? Capital to risk weighted asset ratio. Maybe place when its CRR falls below nine percent. Remember nine plus two point five, eleven point five has to be placed. Nine percent is the default CRR. You remember? I hope you remember. Falls below nine percent. ठीक है? Fourth, कुछ नहीं. <laughs> the prohibition on expansion of size of deposits why are you prohibiting deposit taking because it is adding your liability if you are not having cash to repay why are you taking more liability yes or no samjha did you understand this is 
जैन सिक्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी का सर्कुलर डू यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज सुपरवाइजर एक्शन फ्रेमवर्क प्राइमरीली फॉर अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक राइट समटाइम्स वेरी रेली इट इज अप्लाइड फॉर रूरल बट यू कैन से अर्बन के लिए है Did you see what criteria criteria they chose? What was the criteria? Can you help me recollect the criteria? One, net NPS. Second, this is asset quality only, na? No? Basically, कितना बोला था six percent, है ना? Profitability for two consecutive financial years. Third क्या था? CRAR below nine percent. Do do we know everything that was spoken about in the circular? So you are now even able to read RBI circulars. Is there the catch in economics when you are able to read the language by default government institutions? Then what else do you need? है ना सर आंसर कैसे लाते वो बताओ पहले. ठीक है? Do you understand this? Do you understand this supervisory action framework? Now I'm going to teach you something very important, and you have to pay attention. Okay? Have to, have to, have to, have to pay attention, right? So, just give me one minute. You can write this, Abhi. That I just have to make an emergency call. If you want, you can write this, Abhi. I'll just give you a few minutes. Okay, we'll just go ahead for the time being. I'll give you time later on. Don't worry. Right. Now I want to teach you something very important, something which you should know how it works. It will take some time, but we need to understand what happens. ठीक है? So this is a company. It has borrowed money. It has borrowed money from a bank. who is the borrower company who is the lender bank right what is that called as when this person balance sheet causes a problem in this person balance sheet what is that called as twin balance sheet problem right now when this person this person fails in the business when the company closes down when it incurs losses we see companies closing down every day Who do you think will incur a loss? This person. Who do you think will incur a loss? His employees might also incur a loss. They will not get salaries because this business is going down. They will lose their jobs and all. Yes or no? Right? How it happens is how it happens is whenever so this person would also have a balance sheet. Yes or no? This person would have assets here. This person would have liability here. So if this company is shutting down, what happens? Assets can be sold and whatever money is remaining. some of it will go to the employee some of it will go to the bank yes or no now obviously whatever you will recover would be much lesser than whatever is needed for employees and for bank otherwise if it was enough then wo pehle pehle pay ho jata no it would have been paid earlier only are you understanding this so earlier what used to happen is earlier what used to happen is when when this company starts to default on loans on salary starts to default on loans given or taken by the uh, taken from the bank then this person had to go to a court and who is the debtor and who is the creditor here who is the debtor and who is the creditor here 
creditor is someone who gives money who is giving money here bank who is the debtor come let us call it for example let us call it tata let us call this it gives theek hai simple so if tata so after becoming bad debt after becoming a bad loan do you think one option is that this bad loan can be sold off to an asset reconstruction company by hdfc do you think hdfc if if that is not a feasible option let's say do you think hdfc will stop chasing tata no it will keep on calling ki sir play sir pay 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 iske employees are there who are demanding money ki please pay but tata knows that my company is going bankrupt tata knows that my company is going to shut down then what earlier used to happen is earlier it used to go to courts it used to go to courts to declare themselves as insolvent declare the company as insolvent ki nahi pay kar sakte the company cannot pay there are no funds now what to do what can be done is assets can be sold and whatever money is there they can be used to pay off the liabilities theek hai liabilities kiska hoga bank loan would fall here because why he has borrowed it employees dues would be given etc etc did you understand this scenario now in new scenario so what 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 are the problems is this is last moment up till the last moment this guy didn't go to the court for this process till the end now there are many assets which lose value as day passes theek hai for example if you know uh, kingfisher airlines when it was grounded all the planes were in the open so rain uh, sunlight all these damages the planes so as more and more time passes the asset value also reduces yes or no let's say they have 15 cars these cars of 2019 model but after 5 years do you think their value will be same they, their value even if they are not used their value will not be the same yes or no because they are old cars now 5 years old 6 years old model so that is why what happens is this has to be initiated quickly agar aapko if you want to completely close down your company if you want to really pay off all the creditors you have to close down your company and you have to pay them off but earlier what used to happen the owners of this company they used to delay are necessary they they used to go to court at the very end they used to say ki we are paying we are paying and this is what happened in kingfisher also vijay malya he he defaulted on lot of loans given by sbi central bank of india and all other banks and then what he did was he defaulted on the loans and he took a very long time to go to the courts to declare himself as insolvent to start this process uske wajah se we brought a new regime we brought a new regime where this is a this is this is a bank this is company this is tata this is hdfc theek hai now acha who is who is also claiming money on tata are employees also claiming money on tata their salaries are there there are employees here there are two employees here they also want money he also wants money yes or no bank hai do you think only one bank se loan liya hoga tata ne bank tata would have taken loan from multiple banks there is another bank here is another bank here this let's say called icici is called this sbi he is also taking a claim here samjha now when the new law was brought in i told i i'll tell you which is the new law when the new law was brought in option was given either tata can go to the court or any of them can go to the court so they will not waste time now they will make two calls sir you are not paying i am going to the court are you understanding what is happening here so can i say can i say the responsibility of going to court has shifted from debtor to the creditor can i say this yes because these are the creditors always bear in mind these are the creditors because they have given something which they wanted back he is the debtor because he has taken something even they are creditors how they have given their service for which they need money he has taken their services so i will call them as creditors I'll call everyone as creditor. Creditors, these all are creditors. ठीक है? Now creditors can also approach a court and say that he is not giving me money. ठीक है? Now 
I'll tell you each and every step how this happens and then I'll give the names. Either they can approach the code, they can approach the code, they together can also approach the code. Once they approach the code, let's, let's draw a code here. This is a code. Okay, this is a code. They have approached the code. What do you think court will do? Court will ask documents whether you are paying or not paying. He is saying, I don't pay. I am not paying. Right? Court will appoint one person to look after this. Okay, let us call him A. He is one person who is appointed by the court. He, what he does is, see effectively what he does is, now is the company's management effective anymore? They are not able to repay their debts. So what court tells is to this person, you manage Tata. You manage Tata. Achha, before that, will the court ask Tata for documents? Yes. Why are you defaulting and all? The court will ask Tata, how many assets do you have that we can sell and pay off your creditors? Do you think Tata will give a full list or a partial list of assets? Why? Because owners would take away some money. So if let's say, they have, they have 200 crores worth of assets. See, always keep in mind if they have 200 crores worth of assets, the claims are much more because wo pay ho jata, so he would have paid in first time. But they would give a list of only, let's say I have only sir 50 crores. 150 crores I don't have. Chori because 150 they will take away and run away. Simple. Court says, unko hata. Cross the management or whatever. You come here. Court says, you come here. And you tell us how many assets that Tata actually has. Samaj mein hai? Court says you go and find out how many assets do they actually have. So what he will do? He will look at all the documents. He will spend days, nights. He will visit workshops whether to see what can be sold. Kya kya bet sakte hai. He will see yes or no. Yes or no. He, he comes up with a list. Let's say he came up with a list of assets. He said Tata has... 200 crores worth of assets. Okay, he found out Tata is 200 crores. Now, Inca total claim, bank's total claim is let's say 350 crores. And employee's total claim is let's say 50 crores. Suppose. Right? Is this enough to fulfill both? No. Right? Now, now there are two things which happen here. Have you seen Bollywood movies? When fight happens, when, when, when someone is harassing a girl, hero, hero arrives. Same thing. Option 1, hero arrives. Hero says, I will pour money in Tata. I will pay them off. Tata becomes my company. Simple. Hero is having 1000 crores. He will buy Tata. He will pay them off. 350, 50, 400 crores. He will pay them off. He will become the owner of the company. Is this possible? Yes. Absolutely possible. Yes or no? Are you understanding this? Second. No hero comes. So he will look for heroes or he will not look for heroes. See this guy is just a court appointed person who has a list of 200 crores. Now what he does is he puts an ad in the paper. Whoever wants to buy Tata can come in. Minimum 400 crores lagega aapko. And Uske upar whatever you want to buy, you can buy. Because the owners of Tata are not able to uh, service this company. As a government, would you want the company to go on or close down? The company, as a government or as court, would you want the company to go on or close down? You would always want the company to go on. See, because closing down means job loss. Closing down means, F it, it affects our economy. I hope you understand. Products would be taken away from the market. People would lose jobs and lacks of amount, especially when there are big companies. So government says, government when court appoints this person, it asks that person, give ad in the newspaper. Anyone who wants to buy Tata, minimum 400 crore you have to bring, 350-50. Rest upar ka he can bring whatever he wants and he can take control of the company. Is this beneficial for everyone? Because they get to keep their jobs, they get their money back, they get their money back, they get to keep their jobs and plus this new person would then run Tata with more efficiency because he knows he has invested a lot of money. So there is a change of ownership. Do you agree? What if no hero comes? 
then what can be done tell me no one is ready to buy tata what can be done he will sell the assets for 200 crores usme ka what he will do he will do proportionate 50 is to 350 ke ratio mein 1 is to 7 ke ratio mein he will divide 200 and he will give let's say some part to his some part to this yes or no but will this but will he do this akele or will he do this after meeting with them all the, he will do a meeting yes or no before that before that when he comes and he says ki i am ready to put in 500 crores can we have another hero here yes we can have another hero here can we have another hero here all three are ready now who whom will who will we accept who will we accept will we give the control of tata to this person this person or this person everyone is willing to give money okay who will decide this who will decide this this person will not decide but this person will take a meeting of these people and these ones will decide ki who should pay our money because now their money is stuck effectively tata is being funded by their money so you can say uh, they are the pseudo owners of the company yes or no if you invest some money in some company even if you are not managing it daily you become the owner of that company so yahan pe kiska paisa hai whose money is there in tata these people right so these people become the owner so this guy court tells this guy let them decide whom to choose once they decide see if they don't decide then 200 crore you have to sell off and jitna mil raha you can take it once they decide let's say they decide this guy he is my knight in shining armor yahi hai sapno ka raja they will tell him to appoint him he will give his name to the court yes or no court will see barabar hai he is not a fraud person he will pay it effectively yes or no they get their money they get their money they keep their employment they might even give a fresh loan to increase business he gets a new company tata's original management gets ousted he goes home and sleeps do you agree with this uska job tha to manage this effectively yes or no theek hai did you understand the process this process is called as or this process is mentioned under one of the fundamental laws which were brought in 2016 everyone should know it is called as see the word insolvency and bankruptcy code have you heard of it it is called sorry it is called ibc 2016 major major change what is one major change that was brought from earlier regime to this i have told you already what was one major change earlier it was debtor dependent now the control is in the hands of creditor see now also debtor can go na if he is genuinely he says kya are nahi hai paisa let's go to the court he can go to the court but if he is cunning if he is not willing then creditors can go today also samjha itna theek hai now i will tell you some technical terms let us speak about this guy this guy is called as corporate debtor i will i will use pink to name them this guy is called as corporate debtor theek hai in the in the code why corporate because it's a company but can can this be one person or one partnership firm also or one society also yes so that time he will be called as a non corporate debtor i hope you understand this let us speak about these persons very important very very important do they have money do have they given money i mean have they financed tata or are they engaged with tata on day to day level these guys they are financed theek hai these guys are engaged in day to day level yes or no both are creditors i hope you agree let us call these people whoever gives money see bank hai tomorrow it can be nbfc also non banking financial company they can also give money these these guys who have given money who don't who are not engaged in day to day operations who have given money they are the financiers yes or no so these are called as see the english
फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स बराबर वाई फाइनेंशियल सी दे आर क्रेडिटर्स वाई फाइनेंशियल बिकॉज दे हैव गिवन मनी देन वॉट विल दीज गाइज बी कॉल्ड एज These guys would be called as operational creditors. Why operational creditors? Because they are engaged in day-to-day -day operations. They are employees. They are operational creditors. And yes or no? Can vendors be operational creditors? Vendors means the people with whom you trade. Yes, they can also be. So there is a possibility that he has not paid his suppliers from six months. Tata is taking steel from steel manufacturers, but he has not made steel. That person also becomes an operational creditor. He is an employee. He can be an operational creditor. Okay. Who is left? This person. This person. Same person, na? He is called as an insolvency professional. IP. Insolvency professional. Samjha? So far so good. What about the court? Do we have a special name for the court? Yes. Now this court, if it is, if it is corporate, if this if this person is a corporate, then for corporate, this this court is called as NCLT. For non-corporate. This court is called DRT. DRT. ठीक है. Now what do you mean by NCLT? NCLT is nothing but National Company Law Tribunal. And DRT is debt recovery tribunal. Debt recovery tribunal, National Company Law Tribunal. Why? Who? Who is DRT for non-corporate debtors? For corporate debtor. This court is NCLT, National Company Law Tribunal. If you are not happy, if these guys are not happy with the decision of the court, they can appeal it. So there is an appeal appeal mechanism also. This is High Court, so you go to Supreme Court. From National Company Law Tribunal, you can go to National Company Appellate Law Tribunal, Law Appellate Tribunal. From Debt Recovery Tribunal, you can go to Debt Recovery Appellate Tribunal also. I hope this is very clear. Who who is remaining? these guys are remaining these guys are called as buyers simple buyers acha one more very important thing when this guy will take a decision do you think he will take it on his own or he will call everyone who it is whose decision it is their decision he is so just an agent of the court to ensure that everything happens so I, these guys together i use a different color these guys creditors together they have a very complicated name called committee of creditors coc all decisions under insolvency and bankruptcy code are taken by 60% or 75% voting of committee of creditors any decision that has been taken depends sometimes it is 75% sometimes it is 60% committee of creditors samjha committee of creditors who are committee of creditors all creditors taken together see in that also there are lot of laws if there are financial creditors then these guys don't form part of committee of creditors if there are if there is only one fc then operational also comes no need to go there did you understand this This is the entire insolvency and bankruptcy procedure. This is the main process. This is the main insolvency and bankruptcy procedure. Did you understand? This is my question. What is the change that we have brought here? 
the change that we have brought in is earlier only debtor was allowed to go to the court creditor was not allowed to go to the court now creditor is also allowed to go to the court which helps in faster insolvency proceedings yes or no now some key important aspects of this all this insolvency entire process has to be completed within 330 days has to be completed within 330 days has to be okay second i hope you know about committee of creditors okay committee of creditors this person insolvency pro professional he is governed by the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india ibbi he is governed by i'll give you time to write insolvency and bankruptcy board of india ibbi board friends right theek hai now do you think he will ask all documents from tata or do his own research also he will do he, is do, he will do his own research where will he go he will go to the ministry of companies ka website he will check ki all in the last 10 years what all documents have been filed by tata to the government he will check gst returns income tax returns so that all information repository there is an information repository of all companies you have all the documents of all the companies and that that particular information repository is called as information utility iu did you understand this did you understand this now help me with the terms which we have written in the past uh, in the last sheet let us recollect what are the terms what can you recollect financial creditors operational creditors insolvency professional next next buyer next nclt drt anything else committee of creditors to again debtor corporate debtor non corporate debtor samjha how is the performance of ibc what are the changes that we are making in ibc all this will do in the economic survey wala session because always there is some information given on ibc cases in every economic survey theek hai now let me quickly take you to any one news article i told you na we'll read a lot of news articles any one random news article why the ibc process is often falling short Read this. पहली बात तो wait. Is he allowing to read? नहीं. Forget. See this NCLT. I hope you know NCLT now. National Company Law Tribunal. I hope you are able to give me to read this. हाँ, good. चल रीड दिस आई होप यू नो वॉट इज इंसॉल्वेंसी यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिपेयर सो टूडे इज होमवर्क वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टूडे इज होमवर्क इज टू नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक टेल मी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक specific difference try to think and tell me the specific difference between insolvency and bankruptcy theek hai can you do that this is your homework i am not going to tell some work some work you also have to do read this
the principal objective of the law is to restructure and resolve insolvency of corporate persons corporate debtor insolvency and bankruptcy code is a comprehensive law that consolidates into its manifold both the consequential aspects of an economic collapse of a debtor which means what if tata fails basically <laughs> rehabilitation and liquidation liquidation means what when there is no magic person when there is no hero you liquidate the company you sell the assets rehabilitation means the owner changes rehabilitation the principal objective of the law is to what just just read बहुत बड़ा है टू बिग चल लेट एस रीड वेरी क्विकली द प्रिंसिपल ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द लॉ इज टू रिस्ट्रक्चर आई बी सी इज अ कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव लॉ दैट कंसोलिडेट्स इन टू इट्स मैनिफोल्ड बोथ द कॉन्सिक्वेंशियल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक कोलैप्स ऑफ अ डेटर रिहेबिलिटेशन एंड लिक्विडेशन प्रिंसिपल ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू रिस्ट्रक्चर एंड रिजॉल्व इंसॉलवेंसी ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट पर्सन पार्टनरशिप फॉर्म्स इंडिविजुअल्स प्रॉम्पली फॉर लेवरेजिंग द मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ एसेट्स ऑफ सच पर्सन while proceeding while proceeding there with to also promote the entrepreneurship as well as accessibility the code also aims at not losing sight of the interest of all stakeholders including alteration in the order of priority of payment of government dues we are yet to cover that i will come to this the code has altered the course and manner of resolution of non performing assets 
time bound hai sir you told 330 days it is 180 plus 90 plus more 90 i told you total 330 days hai wo theek hai theek hai theek hai this is very general the code allows the creditors of a corporate debtor to commence the corporate insolvency resolution process yes or no against the corporate debtor in cases of failure of debtor the creditors are classified as operational and financial we told this while the former being the one who has provided goods or services to the debtor including employees central or state government they are all operational creditors while the latter is a financial uh, this thing the corporate debtor tata is restricted from selling or alienating his assets without the approval of committee of creditors did we see this tata tomorrow sells its cars and tells i don't have any assets theek okay? hai resolution professional insolvency professional is also called as resolution professional ठीक है, I will write that down. ठीक है, they are uh, also responsible for aiding COC in gathering information and managing the entire CIRP. After CIRP, either the matter is successfully resolved or the corporate debtor is liquidated. ठीक है, four thousand applications have been admitted, just twenty three percent cases were settled or withdrawn after the commencement. So they have given the performance here, which will change when you by the time next year happens, this will all change. So see this. They owed five lakh crores to creditors with realizable value of the assets being only one lakh crores. Five lakh was the total debt owned. One lakh crores was the uh, realizable value of the assets. However, under the court, the creditors were able to recover two lakh crores. Okay, so it is very effective. Yes or no? Taking three twenty eight days for the conclusion because three thirty का तो limit है उसके अंदर ही करना है. Right? Were you able to understand more of it? or you know, just so i would write insolvency professional ko resolution professional bhi bolte hain did you understand this Yes or no? Now, when money would be, uh, when money would be, uh, uh, when you know, when you sell these assets, come on, get. When you sell all these assets, and when money would come, who do you think would get the first amount? Like priority, kiska hoga? What is the first amount or first priority? Who do you think would get the first priority? What do you think? first priority when you recover money try to think who would where would you get your first or who would you give the first money kisko jayega who would get the first money try to think who would get the first amount When money is coming in, when you sold the first car of Tata, he is having a lot of cars. When you sold it, who do you think would get the first amount? First amount, who will get? Who do you think? Huh? Then what about small people? First amount would all always go as wages. Unka livelihood is dependent on this. There are many people in line who are who who want a share of the money. There are many people, but first is always wages. ठीक है? Did you understand this? First is wages up to twenty four months. Up to two years wages you will get. उसके बाद क्या you will get later on. Who would get priority? Who would get priority after this? Secured creditors or unsecured creditors? Secured creditors because they have security over it. Secured creditors. I should change the numbering. I'll tell you why. After that, who would get the priority? What do you think? After this. Unsecured creditors. After this, government dues, taxes, and anything which is remaining. 
government will also come in ki i also need money government deals right then owners last me owners ko milega yes or no if anything remains let's say if he sells this car and he gets more than 400 crores inko he will pay and rest he will keep it as owners money only yes or no now very interesting in sab ke pehle whose bread and butter is dependent on this process इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल का सैलरी उसका जॉब है वो उसको दो पहले ही इज डूइंग इज ऑल हार्ड वर्क फॉर थ्री हंड्रेड डेज ऑलमोस्ट वन ईयर ही इज वर्किंग सो डोंट डोंट इमेजिन दैट ही इज वन पर्सन ही इज ऑलवेज अ बिग फॉर्म अ बिग कंपनी एक्ट एज एन इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल सो माई फ्रेंड वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड ही वर्क इन अ बिग कंपनी कंसल्टिंग कंपनी सो दे डिप्लॉयड एटीन पीपल टू वर्क एज इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल फॉर वन पर्सन फॉर वन डेटर ओनली So 18 people working as insolvency professionals for one client. Okay. So don't think he uh, he is uh, don't think he is uh, one person or you know his salary will be small. How much will he earn? It is a group. It is a big people. It is a big chunk. But first, obviously, it will go to him. Then you have to memorize this. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. Okay. Please memorize this. Insolvency professional salary one. Why it is called waterfall? Because waterfall is a chart. Hai. First it will fall here, then it will fall here, then it will fall here, then it will fall, and then finally it comes to owners. So this is the what this is known as the waterfall chart, and uh, this is uh, this is the priority in which payment would be made. Okay, priority in which payment would be made. So if you have only fifty crore rupees. You will first clear insolvency professional salary. Let's say his salary is twenty crores. Bacha kitna thirty crores. Let's say wages up to twenty four months is coming to five crores. Bacha kitna twenty five crores. Then you settle secured creditors. Let's say your money got over here. Then inko kya bolenge ham? Bye bye. No money left for them. Did you understand this or did you not understand this? If money is finished here, this is the priority. After this, you will tell them ki now go. Home. now there is no money for you did you understand this first of all is it not clear completely clear insolvency and bankruptcy code very 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 important this process is very 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 important and how will you draw this and uh, these are the terms which you should know corporate debtor buyer financial creditors operational creditors insolvency professional operational insolvency resolution professional nclt drt corporate debtor 330 days committee of creditors ibbi iu right what is committee of creditors what do you mean by committee of creditors all the group of creditors mainly mainly financial creditors mainly financial creditors they are known as committee of creditors did you understand this yes or no if you understood this then only it will make sense to go forward otherwise we'll revise it at the end once what what do you know about bad bank what is bad bank narcl national asset reconstruction company limited uh, what do you know about development finance institution did we see something called dfi yesterday what was it it was it is established with only one purpose in mind which is which is long term lending yes or no lending for long term assets remember we had drawn all that chart and lnt ka example we had taken development financial institution very important that also do you think government is having any shareholding in that yes at least for the near future it has then when it finds when it finds buyers it will sell off its stake to others dfi is being established to solve the problem of dash 
DFI is established to solve the problem of asset liability mismatch. Yes or no? Asset liability mismatch, duration of assets, long term, short term, or rather there was a mismatch that, that is why we were bringing D. Let us revise insolvency and bankruptcy code very quickly. Let us try to revise insolvency and bankruptcy code. Uh, what is the main change from the earlier regime? Earlier debtor was only, earlier it was debtor led. Now can I say it is creditor led? Yes, yes or no? Very good. What do you think is the second change? I'll tell you the second change is now it is time bound. Earlier there was no time. Now it is 330 days mein to khatam karna hi hai. It is time bound. Right? Who is a corporate debtor? Who is a corporate debtor? The one who uh, defaults. Yes or no? Who is a non-corporate debtor? If he is not a company and defaulting, he is a non-corporate debtor. Where will corporate debtor cases go? NCLT, National Company Law Tribunal. Where will non-corporate debtor cases go? DRT, Debt Recovery Tribunal. See, name may likhai, Debt Recovery Tribunal. And National Company Law Tribunal. Why company law? Because it's a corporate debtor. Simple. Are creditors divided into two types? Yes. One is operational, second is financial. Who are operational creditors? Day to day working, mein. can government be an operational creditor? Yes, because of taxes. Day to day operations, say taxes are ahead. Can supplier be a corporate, uh, sorry, operational creditor? Yes. Can banks be an operational creditor? No, banks are providing finance to their financial creditors. What is a group of creditors known as, especially financial creditors? Committee of Creditors, COC. Why is COC important? Because all the decisions are taken by COC. 60%, 75% voting, whatever is done, they are taken by COC. Always remember, 3 fourth majority ho, ya 60% majority ho, it is taken by COC. Who is, an, who is a resolution professional? The one who oversees the entire process, he is appointed by, actually he is appointed by Committee of Creditors. So, so court appoints one person and if the Committee of Creditors say, Ki, we don't like this, we want this person, then they can bring that person also. Okay, that is the technicality, right? Um, what is the, who is the hero in our story? A buyer who will provide funds. So in buyer, does ownership change? Yes, it goes to the new person. Okay, banks get their money, Tata is out. What is the waterfall first? Salary of insolvency professional and all the costs, associated costs, no? salary and cost. Second, Wages up to 24 months, wages salary up to 24 months. Third, secured creditors. Fourth, unsecured creditors. Fifth, government dues. Sixth, owners. Last remaining are the owners. See, there are a lot of categories in them also. Owners may be there are two, three categories. We are not getting into that. Hitna samjha? Chinga. We spoke about bad loans. We spoke about. So, can I say one of the methods of solving NPAs is IBC also? If it's a big amount, no ARC is willing to buy it. Then you can go to IBC, you can say ki I want to recover my loan. Whatever is the recovery, see 99% full nahi milega. We saw in the example out of 5 lakh crores, 2 lakh crores they were able to recover. So whatever is the amount, that will be distributed in the bank. So is it not one way of solving NPAs also? Tata company was an NPA for HDFC bank. This all process was done to solve that NPA. So lot of processes to solve NPA. Coming to which, I told you NPAs ka one of the major reason is reckless lending, yes or no? So can I say... If NPS follow strict rules and regulations, if NP uh, sorry, if banks follow strict rules and regulations, if they professionalize the management, there would be lesser NPS. Yes. Can I say there are governance issues in the bank? Governance, you know, governance rules and regulations and all. Can I say there are also governance issues in banks? In pursuit of business, in pursuit of profits, they might sacrifice their rules and regulations. Yes or no? They might not follow rules and regulations. So, can I say governance needs to be strengthened? So, for example, in our Indian polity also, if some minister is not working properly or rules are not being followed or IS officers are not working properly, do you think governance needs to be strengthened? Yes, governance needs to be strengthened. So, when we speak about governance, when we speak about governance, we usually think governance means government and polity and all other government working. When the same thing, see governance is the management, governance is the administration of anything. So this level of class also has a governance system. Ki, you know, uh, teachers should come on time or uh, teacher, uh, let's say they should not leave wrappers here and there. Students should not leave wrappers here and there. These are all governance issues. Okay? The way an institution is run 
it is called government now that institution can be a country that institution can be a small firm that institution can be a big firm that institution can be a bank also always remember whenever we talk about governance normally we speak about government or the way they are running the country whenever we speak about governance about a particular company we call it as corporate governance samjha why corporate governance do you understand the term corporate governance corporate governance ठीक है इट इज वेरी सिंपल कॉर्पोरेट गवर्नेंस सो नाउ अ कमिटी वाज सेट अप टू लुक इनटू द गवर्नेंस इश्यूज ऑफ बैंक्स नाउ आई एम आई एम थिंकिंग यू विल बी एबल टू अप्रिशिएट व्हाई टू लुक इनटू द गवर्नेंस इश्यू ऑफ बैंक्स टू लुक व्हाई बैंक्स आर फ्रॉड्स आर हैपनिंग इन बैंक्स व्हाई बैंक्स आर गिविंग आउट लोन्स रेकलेसली व्हाई एनपीएस आर राइजिंग सो दैट कमिटी अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट कमिटी इज कॉल्ड एज कमिटी ऑन गवर्नेंस इज कॉल्ड एज पीजे नायक कमिटी पीजे नायक कमिटी डिड यू अंडरस्टैंड पीजे नायक कमिटी वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ इट फोकस ऑन गवर्नेंस इन बैंक इट गेव सटन रेकमेंडेशन समझा इट गेव सटन रेकमेंडेशन फर्स्ट रेकमेंडेशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट रेकमेंडेशन एवरी वन फेवरेट फर्स्ट रेकमेंडेशन वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट government share should be reduced to less than 50% first recommendation a inefficiency aapki wajah se ho raha hai just reduce it government recommended government committee only recommended ki government share should reduce why because private people will hire more efficient people more qualified knowledgeable people theek hai second the higher higher level people hote na in the banks managing director executive director all those appointments should be professionalized appointments should be professionalized appointments should be professionalized what what about the third one have you heard about the term called chairperson have you heard the term called managing director have you heard the term called whole time director maybe not theek okay? hai so they they recommended ki so what happened in banks was ki chair person is there since 10 years 15 years so that might breed corruption that might breed a lot of uh, familiarity so you know that is why ias officers are often change their posting why right? so that you don't have so deep connections ki you start accepting bribes and on idhar hi baithe 15 saal se so you change your posting go to some other state abhi wahan banao connection then go to some other state they recommended 5 years as the tenure 5 years as the tenure for chairperson or managing director i hope you know understand md is managing director and 3 years 5 years for chairperson and managing director and 3 years for full time director full time director means one who is not a managing director but still so one who doesn't get ias but still gets other service vaisa so he is still working in service but not as a chairperson theek hai for example every player in the cricket team is a player but only one person is a captain so he is a captain he is a player simple theek hai whole time director he is a director whole time hai 3 years ke liye usne very important merge banks this is going on in india now merge the banks Why merge the banks? One area having Kotak, one area. Uske baju mein Bank of Baroda, uske baju mein Canara Bank. Have only one bank. Merge these three. Have only one branch. You will save money. You will save salary cost. You will save electricity cost, branch cost, rent cost. Everything you will save. Hey na? Now what do you think? One person goes in all three. No, merge them. Keep it there. And very important last point. Have you seen a rainbow? What is rainbow called in Hindi or Marathi? इंद्रधनुष इंद्रधनुष इट मीन रेनबो ठीक है बेर इन माइंड दिस इंद्रधनुष इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन विच यू विल लर्न इन साइंस एंड टेक इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन विच यू विल लर्न इन हेल्थ इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वन विच यू लर्न इन करंट अफेयर्स दैट टॉक्स अबाउट वैक्सीनेशन स्ट्रैटेजी 
Indradhanush. We have mission Indradhanush also in our health social areas. This we are talking about PJ Naik recommendation. So you will find a lot many things in your UPSC preparation. The same name but for different areas. So you will find something in economics which might be something in social also but completely different but name is same. Okay. How many colors does the rainbow have? Seven. Okay. Seven. They gave an Indra Dhanu strategy. Let us go one by one. Government share reduce fifty percent. Consolidate and merge the banks together. Appointment should be professionalized. Five years chairperson ko maximum ten years. Three years is the maximum ten years for whole time director, which means after three years. Keep someone else, appoint someone else, remove that person. He will become whole time director in some other bank or uh, some place else, but at least he will not be invested in the bank so much. Ki, you know, he will have scope for corruption. Did you understand this? Now let us speak about Indra Dhanu strategy. Indra Dhanu strategy is nothing but A se chalu hone wala. They have given one point. They have given one point starting from B, C, D, E, F, G. For example, I will give you an example. Appointment should be professionalized. That is stands for A. Similarly, you don't need to know all of them. G is for good governance. Bank should have good governance. Simple. B is very important. B is the one which is which, which we have to focus on. B is called as Banks Boards Bureau. Sir, what is Banks Boards Bureau? So earlier I'll tell you how appointment of chairperson of public sector banks used to happen. You understand what is public sector banks, government ownership? How they used to happen? Government used to appoint them. Now do you think someone with a lot of connection can get appointed to a bank? Yes, it was possible. So this committee, PJNI committee said ki establish a separate bank board bureau who will appoint who will appoint these people and they would be independent. They would not be someone. Um, who is directly connected to the government? They would be independent. Yes, government people would also be there in the, in the as bank board bureau. This will be headed by an IAS officer, maybe retired IAS officer, and they will make appointments to public sector banks. They will make appointments to uh, uh, senior positions, chairperson, managing director of public sector bank. Samja, what is the logic behind bank board bureau? Why to make appointments? But to public sector, na? to then what RBI did you know? Even private sector, if you want to appoint a managing director or chairperson in a private sector bank, it would need RBI permission. Simple. Right? See this. News. See this. What is the headline? Bank Board Bureau recommend 10 names for executive director post in public sector banks. Yes or no? Six applications for the post of PNB chief. PNB ka chief. It is asking for applications. Next. Same. Same. PNB MD and CEO post. Managing director and chief executive officer. Okay, so time pass. Recommends SL Jain for Indian Bank MD position. Who makes the appointment? Government. Who recommends the name? Bank Board Bureau. Recommends. Okay. Appointment has to be done by government because contract will be signed by the government because government is the owner of the bank. Yes or no? Bank Board Bureau. Okay, the bureau interfaced with nine candidates from various public sector banks. They had interviews and all. Okay. See this. See this. I have not seen this website. I am very honestly telling you. Come back. 2014. Committee to review governance of boards of banks in India, chaired by Dr. P. J. Nayak, recommends setting up of Banks Board Bureau. 2015 announces creation of Banks Board Bureau. 2016 starts functioning from 1st April 2016. 19. Are yeah. 
Scope of Bureau functions extended to cover appointments of Chairman, Managing Director, CMD, other board positions of public sector, insurance companies also. Very important point, insurance companies are also now being appointed by the Bank Sports Bureau, but only public sector insurance companies and public sector. Very good MCQ, you know, it can form. See, this is how you should study. You should go on the website. You should read about the major objectives, not in detail, but you will come to know a lot many things about it. Right? Or kuch hai? See, recommendation for the position of executive directors in public sector banks. Vacancy hai. See, this is how they give the news. Managing director of PNB required. Candidate should be in the age of 45 to 57 years, so on and so forth. Okay, these are all news articles. What is the vision? Search and select opposite personages, appropriate people for board of public sector banks, public sector financial institutions, public sector insurance companies and recommend measures to improve corporate governance. Did you understand Bank Board Bureau? Who is the current chairman? Let us check. Who is the current chairman? Bhanu Pratap Sharma is the current chairman. Okay, no need to remember this, I am just telling. He would be a senior bureaucrat. Did you understand Bank Board Bureau? They were recommended by whom? Which committee? Which committee? PJ Nayak committee. PJ Nayak nahi Khalnayak. PJ Nayak committee 2014. Bank Board Bureau started functioning from 2016. Yes or no? We saw this. So let us add this if we have read this. Thing. Itna samjha. Did you understand this? It is very important. All these concepts are so important. Give me kya hi bolu. Right? What did we see in this lecture till date? Let us try to recollect. We started with what? What did we start first? We started with the history of banking. We saw nationalization happen twice. Yes or no? Which years? Can you remember? 1969, 14 banks. 1986, banks. Then we went for LPG reforms, 1991. Did we set up any committee after that? Very important committee, Narsim Hum Committee, 1991 and 1998. How, what were the recommendations? Can, you, can we recollect the recommendations one? One, what were the recommendations? Any any recommendation you can think of. CRR, SLR, reduce, reduce interest rates, reduce, uh, priori rationalize priority sector lending norms, set up asset reconstruction companies, uh, uh, establish macro prudential norms. Then you have uh, uh, no more nationalization, sabse bada, this thing. Then merge the banks because, okay. What were PJ Nayak committee recommendations? Just try to recollect. Similar recommendations, government shareholding should be reduced. MD CEO post cut tenure is given 5 years, 3 years for whole time director. Then what else? What else were given? Merge the banks, consolidate banks. Then what else was given? Indra Dhanu strategy was given. Appointment should be professionalized. PJ Nayak committee, corporate governance of banks, 2014. Banks board bureau, we saw banks board bureau now only. Insurance companies, financial institution, banks. Pinoka senior positions appointment are recommended by Banks Board Bureau, appointed by government, okay? but only public sector, private sector. Mein. Private sector permission has to be taken from RBI or insurance authority, etc. Next, what else did we see? After maximum committee, we implemented these norms. We saw about insolvency and bankruptcy code. I hope you know the entire process. I, IR professional is appointed, insolvency resolution professional is appointed, corporate data ke pass. Ah, hai. Okay, then we saw this also, prompt and corrective action. What is prompt and corrective action for scheduled commercial banks? What do they see? Three things normally, capital adequacy, profitability and asset quality. Okay, then what is it called for urban cooperative banks? You, when you write this down, you have to write why I have, I have written this as hospital. It is like hospital. Don't, don't think the hospital may applicable in all. What is it called for urban cooperative banks? Is there anything which we call urban cooperative banks? It is called as Supervisory Action Framework, SAF. Supervisory Action Framework, we have seen, right? So, I will give you two, 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 two seconds to pause and this thing. You can write this down. 
we'll stop here there is still remaining in banking i had expected that i will finish it off in this lecture but there is still so much remaining in banking that we will continue i don't want to leave out anything i want you to understand each and everything about banking and hence i am taking this time theek hai so we'll stop here uh, you can pause here actually you can pause this if you want to copy but very important see i hope by now you realize how important it is to revise every word every comma every full stop you have to revise and imagine we are covering this in 35 40 lectures but there is still much more to be read in newspaper yes or no every time you come to know something new that is why it is very important to stick to economics don't just read it once and leave it for four months and then after that come see when you come after four months na everything would be wiped off it is very necessary for you to revise everything right so you can pause here if you want i am going to the next screen you can pause here if you want narsimham committee 12 1991 1990, 1998 recommendations lpg happened in 1991 what is l what is p what is g we are not seeing that here you can pause here next pca prompt and corrective actions you can pause here you can write in fact this and next screen you can write it together also if you are writing pca and supervisory action framework right i'll pause here next this i don't think you should write <laughs> this this is something you know what this is a very good exercise for you see if a question comes ki please explain the ibc process or insolvency bankruptcy code process in brief means question 10 marker you have to explain the process then it becomes very interesting so what i want you to do is you can draw this if you want but you have to explain the process in two small paragraphs ki what happens this guy defaults these guys are called as this these guys called this then this appoints this person then this person appoints committee of creditors then they take a voting then buyer comes in different buyer comes in i want you to attempt this i want you to write an answer on this theek okay? hai this is how we practice this is how we do because if such an easy question comes i want you to get the maximum marks theek okay? hai so i want you to try to write you draw this if you want i will be sending the ppt anyways but try to write an answer based on this just see and write if you want see and write but write it in textual form and then see how much how many details do you miss or you don't miss any details right so i'll pause here like you pause here next pause here if you want next pause here if you want next very important pause here i use colors because colors help us remember so green mein page na aayega this you will never forget now i'll pause here banks board bureau right so we'll end here we'll stop here quickly we'll move on to the next lecture right so let's say tomorrow or next week depending on when you get this lecture uh, see this lecture and um, i hope by now you are really getting the hang of economics we have read so many random things on the internet we just go to the internet see in the news and see so i hope you are able to understand what is happening yes or no and revision is the key keep on revising we'll in the next lecture we'll continue with mcqs i am going to start mcqs in the next lecture we'll see how to solve prelims and all theek hai so thank you so much uh, keep on revising